children with a one-track mind. He can't stop thinking about washing machines. As you can see, it says liquid bleach, fabric softener, and detergent. For another boy, it's game shows. You've won the highest amount in game show history. But it's no joke. Their obsession is a symptom of a unique disorder. Tonight, we take you into their world. They're highly intelligent, but their brains are wired differently. They can't read faces if someone's sad or angry, but that leaves them alone, isolated. Jay Shadler with kids struggling to understand the language of life. Imagine, if you can, looking at a face and not having a clue what that person was feeling, not knowing whether he was mad or sad, happy or anxious. Well, tonight, Jay Shadler introduces you to some children who simply cannot read the emotions of others. They live with emotional blindness. So unable to understand people, they retreat into a world of obsessing over objects. I work on the railroad. Chad Mirhoff loves trains. So do a lot of six-year-olds, but not like this. It's what I call train tracks. Chad is literally mesmerized by them. And uh, it's a real nice washer because Mickey Hebert's passion is washing machines and dryers. It doesn't even have a permit press cycle. He'd talk about them all day if you'd let him. I had like a little picture here of a dryer up door, but now I can make them open. Sometimes he does anyway. It's a pretty nice dryer if you look at it. Daily Double! And for Derek Price, life is a game show. You've won the highest amount in game show history. Where he's the host and anyone within listening range is a contestant. Let's play! In many ways, Derek, Mickey, and Chad seem like other kids you know. But their intense obsessions are early symptoms of Asperger's syndrome a devastating neurological disorder that makes it nearly impossible for these kids to keep friends, carry a normal conversation, feel emotions, in short, to fit in. So these are people who are very socially inept. Dr. Fred Volkmar of Yale University is one of the nation's leading experts on Asperger's. A child with Asperger's will have a very severe social deficit. Uh, it's not a little quirkiness and it's not a little oddity. It's a child who has major trouble with almost all peers in almost all situations. Ironically, kids with Asperger's are often bright and very verbal, but their intelligence masks a staggering inability to emotionally relate to other people. Don't laugh at me! Don't laugh! Confused and frustrated, they may eventually lash out. Don't quit. Life for these children can be so filled with torment, some contemplate suicide even before they reach their teens. Derek's been suicidal since he was seven. When he was seven, he told me, I want to be dead. Chad was opening the window. He was standing up on the windowsill, and he was telling me that he was going to jump down and how there would be blood all over and how he would be dead. He was five. Oh, is that the inside of the washer? Dad. As infants and toddlers, all three of these boys seem to be developing normally. A, B, C, B, B. Intellectually advanced, even. How do you move? But we can't, honey. It's, it'll take too long. At first, Chad's fascination with trains was charming. But as it crossed the line into fixation, his parents began to worry. Come to Mom. Oh, I want to see the train move. Shall we go home? You can see can't. why. Watch the relentless focus of his one-track mind. Okay, you ready? I want to see him move, but it's going to take too long. Okay, so we'll see it another time. Fine, I'm going to see the new... No, please. Chad. I want to see the train go by. I want to see it move. Honey, it's not going to move. Never? I want to see the train. Experts believe these fixations reveal a mind more comfortable talking about objects than relating to people. Asperger's is similar in some respects to autism. And as you will see, the brains of people with the disorder are actually wired differently than most of ours, leaving them unable to understand the most basic social or emotional cues. For instance, 
Most of us can easily tell when someone's face shows happiness or sadness, but it's nearly impossible for the person with Asperger's. A teacher's raised eyebrow, an angry inflection in the voice, none of that registers. And without that instinctive ability, life is a maddening puzzle with the most important pieces missing. The trouble usually begins in earnest when the child leaves the protective cocoon of the family. At four years old, Chad was expelled from preschool. He couldn't move from activity to activity. He was beating to a different drummer. <laughs> and he, so he was all over the place. And then when they would try to redirect him, he would have meltdowns. Come back for you. Chad now goes to a public school, but he's in a special class. Gullible decided to dress up too. A teacher and two additional aides have Asperger's training and Job's patience. They understand it's Chad's own frustration that ignite his tantrums. You put your head. Here, the teacher told class they would sing the hokey pokey one time. Remember, she said one time. Asperger's kids take words very literally. So when she started singing it again... Nico's turn, right here, Josh. No, no, you one. One time, everybody. He heard her say, we're going to do it one time. And so they did it one time. And what she meant was that each child was going to get to do it one time. And so he freaked out. Because she said one thing, and she did, in his mind, something else. Oh, so to help Chad make sense of his down. world, a tutor works with him on understanding facial expressions. How do mad eyes go? Let me see. Like this. <sighs> like that. Firm. He has to be taught yeah, things that other children pick up naturally. I've been in front of the mirror with him, and we practice how do you make a sad face, how do you make a happy face. Hello, Chad, talking to you. This is Chad right here. Blah, blah, blah. Still, at Chad's young age, he's just six now, strange reactions do not make him a social outcast. But add five years, and 11-year-old Mickey Hebert's odd behavior makes him ripe for ridicule. Or if you want your extra rinse on, you do another rinse and a spin, and then off. For starters, Mickey will be hard-pressed to find a friend that shares his particular obsession. And it says, automatic washer, operating instructions. That game is lame, there's nothing to it. Combine that with this kind of behavior in school. Forget it. And it can be a ticket to exile. I want to. Like most kids with Asperger's, Mickey has poor motor skills. Add to that a weight gain, side effect from the powerful antipsychotic drugs he must take, and gym class becomes a lonely torment. Don't touch me. Frustrated now, his actions become more bizarre. Hands off me! Isolating him even further. <laughs> By math class, Mickey can barely contain himself. If it weren't for a special aid supplied by the school, it seems either Mickey or his classmates would burst. Aww. Because he's gone there all his life, kids are very patient with Mickey. But as he gets older, we notice that they're maybe becoming a little less patient with him. They're tired of trying to understand why he does some of the things he does. Some kids say I'm stupid, and I'd say to them, I say, well, you're stupid, pal. That's, I know that I'm not stupid. These are kids who have a strong desire to make relationships, who want to fit in, who want to have friends, and who over and over again have the repeated experience of failure. Derek Preuss. I am a kid with Asperger's. No one can stop me from being a kid with Asperger's. The only thing that can help me is you understand this. If you just take a step into my shoes, then you'll understand what it feels like to be a kid with Asperger's. But to walk in those small shoes requires a glimpse inside his young mind. We brought Derek to Yale University, where scientists have been studying the brains of people with Asperger's. Remember to look through the mirror, OK? All right. First, the researchers conduct a scan of Derek's brain while showing him a series of pictures of human faces. Derek, you're doing wonderful. When the average person looks at a human face, neurons in the brain are activated at very specific sites, highlighted here in red. But Derek's brain scan shows nothing in those same regions. His brain is registering faces in an area normally used to process objects like tables and chairs. Now watch this. 
Derek is set up with a tiny camera rigged to a baseball cap and focused on his eyeball, allowing scientists to track exactly where he's looking. Then he is shown several scenes from a movie. Ah, uh, kids, sit down. As it turns out in this slow motion replay, you can see Derek looks almost exclusively at the speaker's mouth, missing all the other visual cues in the scene. By contrast, this is how our producer saw the scene. Occasionally, she watches the person's mouth, but mostly she concentrates on the eyes, then the listener's reaction, then back to the speaker's face. As a result, she captures a full tapestry of emotion and information. Both experiments show how the rich but silent language of the human face is all but lost on the child with Asperger's. Is that your final decision? Derek has not been invited to a single birthday party for, for any of his classmates. Derek had a birthday two years ago. Last and, year. And Last year. Invited all his friends and the alley. And we came to the realization about a half hour before we were going down the bowling alley that no one was going to come. One little girl came. Millionaire! It stinks. Like others with Asperger's, Derek is very much aware he's different. We're two players competing against another two players. But his social skills are so limited he can't distinguish telling a joke from being the butt of one. They were teasing me, and they were probably just play teasing, but I don't know that. I don't know that. I do not know that. Sometimes the isolation and the anxiety is simply all too much. This is Derek just a few years ago during a school recital. He's the one in the striped shirt. Think of the worst day that you've ever had. You know, the most stressful day. You got up late, you got caught in traffic, uh, the meeting went poorly. You know, just imagine your most stressful day that you've ever, ever had. And your worst day is his best day. Congratulations, Grandma, you're the winner! And so Derek retreats to the comfort of his make-believe game shows. The bad thing about it is that the clothes will fall out when, you're, when it's spinning. That's pretty much why they put a door on them. Mickey to his appliances and Chad to his trains. I've been working on the railroad. Oh. Inside their obsessions, there's no need to explain the strange truth about their lives. Just because they're singing solo doesn't mean they want to be alone. Excellent. All right. You can find more information on Asperger's on our website at abcnews.com.